slightly taller. Sam, thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mark Katchis. I'm the editor of The Oregonian and Oregon Live. And it's a pleasure to welcome you all here tonight for tonight's speaker series event. We have done these now. We've done about 30 speaker event series uh, over the last year. Uh, this has been the most delicious one so far. <laughs> I'll tell you that already. Thank you so much for the appetizers. They were delicious, wonderful. Uh, the speaker series brings local and national thought leaders to the stage. Uh, oftentimes, we have some of the top talent at the Oregonian Oregon Live newsroom also appearing on stage uh, to interact and engage directly with our readers. About Three quarters of our audience tonight, and it is a packed house here, are members of the Oregonian Plus program. The Oregonian Plus program is free for subscribers, and it entitles you to discounts uh, and uh, sometimes complimentary access to events such as this and other benefits as well. If you want to know more about that, you can go online to members.oregonlive.com. I'm thrilled tonight to stand here with uh, these folks here and announce tonight's program. I've got two of my stars. Uh, Christy Turnquist is our pop culture and television writer at The Oregonian, Oregon Live. And Samantha Bacall, uh, one of our rising stars, uh, is a food and dining writer at The Oregonian, Oregon Live. And we're joined, of course, by these two recognizable faces, yes, they are real. I heard somebody say, <laughs> they are real, uh, as they walked in. Uh, Doug Adams is the chef de cuisine at Imperial Restaurant. Uh, welcome. And Gregory Gorday is the executive chef at Departure. Interesting, interesting that there are two restaurants, two fabulous restaurants located within four and a half blocks of each other in downtown. And we went to college together. Is that right? Well, at the same school. Wow. A few years apart. Amazing. <laughs> well, we all know how well they did on Top Chef. Uh, fabulous, fabulous showing. They made Portland very, very proud. Uh, we got very excited watching you uh, throughout. Uh, Gregory, you came this close. A little less sugar, and maybe you won. <laughs> yeah, and some shrimp shells, too. I think it was a sushi chef that blew it for us. <laughs> but thank you again for your delicious appetizers, and thank you for joining us on stage tonight. Uh, they're going to talk a little bit about their experiences, what it meant to them, uh, how they got into it, uh, talk a little bit about the Portland food scene, and uh, Christy and Sam are going to ask questions. There'll be time for questions from you as well, and I'm going to hand this back over to you, Samantha, and I'll let you guys have at it. Again, welcome. <laughs> well, thanks, Mark. Um, and thanks, everybody, for coming. It's great to see all these folks here. It's good to know we're not the only uh, Top Chef fans in the room and fans of these guys' wonderful cooking here in Portland. Um, you know, Sam and I were talking before we came, and we thought it would be um, kind of helpful. You know, we learned a bit about you guys on the show. Look at that eyebrow go up. <laughs> But we thought, um, you know, it would just be good to hear a little bit more about, you know, your backgrounds, how you both sort of got interested in food, how you got interested in coming to Portland, and where, where you worked once you got here. Take it away. Um, hi, Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> um, you all know who I am. Uh, me, I have been cooking for about 17 years. I grew up in Queens. Um, I went to boarding Woo! school in Delaware. Yes, to represent. <laughs> Um, I ended up in Montana because I thought I wanted to study wildlife biology. Um, so I've always kind of either lived in the city or lived somewhere a little more quiet, a little more rural. Um, and in Montana, I started cooking. I lived on my own for the first time. I paid rent for the first time. And I started cooking to support myself and sustain myself. And that's where I fell in love with the art. 
And um, I graduated from University of Montana with a French degree, and I moved back to New York to go upstate to go to CIA, and that is where it all began. Um, I ended up in Portland after a long, good decade in New York City, just having way too much fun. And I needed to slow down, so I moved to the West Coast. And um, after a short stint in San Diego, I found my way to Portland, Oregon. And um, my life has been amazing ever since. Hi. <laughs> I'm Dougie. <laughs> um, so I grew up in uh, East Texas, outside of Dallas. Um, and my parents were both kind of old hippies from Boulder, Colorado. And, uh, and I don't know why they chose to move to Texas, but they did. But we lived in the country, and uh, my parents always had a big garden. Um, of course, like Texas is like big football country, and which I was really good at uh, my, my whole life. Uh, so I turned 18 and moved up to Montana. <laughs> um, funny, we lived in the same town. We both went to school at U of M. Uh, I only lasted a year in college, though. <laughs> I was too busy fly fishing and drinking beer and all that. But... Um, my whole life, even in high school, I always worked at restaurants. Actually, my, my first job, I was washing dishes at a barbecue joint in Tyler. And something happened. I was like a punk kid. So I, like, I walked out on my shift and was like, this will be the last restaurant I ever work at. I'm going to be a lawyer or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> karma was just kind of hanging over my head. Um, so I was up in Montana, and I was always just cooking. I mean, that was just always a job that I had. And had way too much fun in Montana, and after a conversation with my dad, he was like, well, you know, you got to do something. I was like, well, I know how to cook. So I came out to Portland, and um, I got a job at, I went to, I started at um, WCI, Western Culinary School. Only lasted about four months. <laughs> I'm really not good at sitting still or going, or going to school. I'm, like, hyperactive. And, uh, and I got a job at a restaurant called Lucier that was on the waterfront, the famed Lucier. And uh, it was kind of a networking dream because it closed <laughs> and all these amazing chefs like went different ways. So I met Greg Denton and Gabby and Kristen Murray and Yair Maiden and all these people. And I just fell in the right crowd and I just love to cook and everything just kind of lined up. It's a great place to cook, Portland, Oregon. It really, really is. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> <laughs> a plus. <laughs> Did you want to say yeah, that? Sure. So you guys have been a part of the Portland restaurant scene for a while now. Why Top Chef? Um, well, I'm a little older than Dougie, so I've actually auditioned. I've known the history of Top Chef. I've known someone who's been on Top Chef since the first season. Um, some of my coworkers on it. So I've, you know, I've been cooking for a long time, and I've just known the history of the, the show for a very, very long time. Um, you know, I've had close coworkers on past seasons, etc. Um, I don't know. I mean, I auditioned twice. I auditioned like the second season. I auditioned like the fourth season or something. Um, I auditioned a couple of years ago, um, but I kind of let put it to rest, you know. Um, but you know, in this day and age where we all watch TV and and media and publicists are so important to something, I don't know what, but they are. Um, uh, I've done a couple other TV shows um, for fun, and um, a casting agent found me. Um, and suggested I do it, and I was like, absolutely not, I'm pretty busy. Um, <laughs> the application process is grueling, and for about six weeks, you, every time your phone rings with a Los Angeles area code, you're freaking out because you're thinking it's them. <laughs> um, and you, the time commitment, you know, like eight weeks uh, be, to be pulled from your restaurant, you know, in the spring, which is like the busy season because everyone comes out when it's nice out here. So it, it's a lot, you know, um, but I was like, hey, you know, what the heck? Um, I like to take opportunities and um, run with stuff, so um, I just took the challenge um, and jumped, jumped in. Um, and as soon as you know, people like Dougie and I get into something, we want it really bad. So um, after that flight to LA, where we were for castings and interviews, you know, it's everything you want, and um, you know, just take a risk and went for it. Um, I didn't try out. <laughs> uh, it's I don't know. It was such a a blur of phone calls and emails and Skype interviews. Um, I think they originally were coming uh, from my roommate who works at Pigeon. And I got looped in it. And I worked for Vitaly Paley at Imperial. And, you know, he did Iron Chef and was like, dude, you got to go for this. Like, trust me. You'll, you'll be very, very happy if you get on. And the whirlwind just kind of started. And like he said, it's lots of phone calls <laughs> in the middle of service yeah. oftentimes. And you're like... And it just kind of snowballed. And then all of a sudden, and the whole time, you know, I'm like, 
it's not going to be me, right? Like, there's probably like five, <laughs> millions of people like <laughs> who are way better than me at all this. I, mean, um, I think by the time we got to it, it's it's from nationwide down to like the final fifty, and that's where that we we saw each other at the airport in L.A. Yeah, just like, and, and I'm like, hey, what, what's up? What's what are you up, doing? bro? <laughs> what are you doing? Going to L.A. for the weekend, huh? <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, they're like, oh, you guys weren't supposed to see each other. Yeah. Like, well, you put us on the same plane. Yeah. <laughs> so then it's like super secret. And, we're like, and we didn't and talk we're, about it. We're both kind of recognizable. <laughs> it's like... For different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's that guy from The Hobbit. Uh, <laughs> so It's Urkel. The, <laughs> so the, the, the ball just started rolling. And, you know, the, but the whole time I was going through it, I was like... It was hard for me to take it seriously because, you know, I just didn't think that it was going to happen. Really Plus, they at drag all. you along. It's like painful. And, you know, you're dealing with, I always kept, I was like, you know, these people are from LA. <laughs> you know, like they're, I kept on like having like Entourage. You guys watch that show? Like, I imagine everyone was like Ari on that show. Like, <clears throat> so, but then it just, it just kept going and kept going. And then all of a sudden, like, I'm on a plane to L.A. with Gregory. And I'm like, oh, it's Gregory Gorday. This is big time now. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, and then all of a sudden, I was fly fishing with my dad in Montana. And I got this call. And they're like, I told him, I was like, well, I'm going to be fishing with my dad in Montana. I'm like, keep your phone on you. <laughs> so my dad was making fun of me the entire time. Like, put your phone down. And they called me. And they're like, yeah, you're on. We're gonna get out on plane to LA in two days. We're gonna we're gonna fly you to Boston, and I'm yeah. like, whoa, <laughs> okay. And then it's the panic moment. It's like I should have been practicing this whole time. <laughs> I'm not even ready for this. <laughs> well, I'm wondering. I mean, you say you know you did an audition or you did audition. How do you audition for a show like this? I mean, other than all the phone calls, where I guess they call and make sure that you're not you know nutty. Mm, I, I think uh, to be very very honest, um, they do want a varied cast. Um, so you're not honestly judged on your cooking skills, but it's more of your background and your story. Because I think the casting agents and producers, they want personality first. So that's the biggest thing. Um, or backstory. And I think Doug's the personality, I'm the backstory. Um, and they, they want... <laughs> I, always, I always saw myself as the looks. <laughs> not even close. But, um... Adam Harvey. <laughs> That's one thing. But they want a mix. You know, they want the professor. They want the culinary teacher. They want the caterer. They want the food truck chef. You know, they want a nice mix of different people. And then they want to see what happens when you bring people from different backgrounds and culinary histories together. And, you know, they're left to the judge's table. Who's left? You know, they don't necessarily think that just because you have a great pedigree that you're going to be top chef. It's like any men's game. So. And the, the pressure, too, you know, when the first day was pretty scary. Of course I mean, um, and you're like, they make you stand there and they make you listen to everyone's accolades, right? And there's all these people like, <laughs> oh, I've worked for so and so and so. And I'm looking around, I'm like, oh, I'm in big trouble. I mean, I got, I mean, I work for Vitaly, but I'm so young, you know, and I'm like, I'm an executive chef. I was up for James Beard. But it's the competition is so. You know, that it really doesn't mean anything. It's just about, like, keeping your head. Yeah, and I think uh, by the middle of the competition, you know, like, the judges give you so much critique and you learn how to play the game that it kind of evens the field out because there's nothing outside of being on Top Chef and the rules, and you know the rules, and you know how much the challenge weighs, and you know the time frame. So it kind of evens out the playing field because you're all doing the same thing for so long that it's it's who can kind of navigate through what they're throwing at you right then and there. And deal with the pressure. Yeah. The pressure was huge. Well, we were wondering about that because, yeah, I mean, it just—it sounds like everybody's exhausted. You're not getting much sleep. No, how like, do you, just how do you, imagine how do you do that. that. <laughs> okay, so the, the show is 43 minutes long. It takes three days to shoot one episode. So the four minutes that you see us freaking out is actually like like hours and hours and hours, and <laughs> hours. And me and <laughs> one one thing. I mean, when I look back on that, it was such an amazing experience for so many different reasons. But like, really having. Having him there was was actually awesome because there'd be so many times where across the room we'd like give each other looks. Yeah, and to know that like we're kind of from the same place, and it's like whoa, this is crazy. Because right? we didn't <laughs> talk between casting and like getting yeah. cast, so but we were roommates. Like the, the first, entire time the too. first, the first day on set, we just like we hadn't talked at all, and we hadn't seen each other since L.A. 
and we just like hug each other <laughs> and like we weren't allowed to talk yet at all we, we, we weren't introduced to each other by, by any means and we had to like just jump into the first challenge but we just like hug each other the first second we saw each other <laughs> <laughs> just like oh my god I mean and it's but there were so many times I mean it, it's pretty funny we would we were roommates and you never sleep because you never know I mean constantly you're just like what's coming tomorrow do I gotta cook for Jock Papine? Do yeah. I gotta cook for? So you're just constantly this nervous, and we would both wake up in the middle of the night and look at each other, just and it was like each other. half Cold cry, sweats. half laugh, <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and and one of us would be like, I can't do this anymore, and the other one would be like, No, you got to. <laughs> I mean, it's we're we're leaving in like soon. Yeah, but it was really it was really nice and comforting to have someone from somewhere you know similar. You know, we're both from Portland to just like. Even if it was a second, like a look to know that, like, wow, this is insane. Yeah. But we're like, we're here together. Yeah. Like, you know, it's it was pretty stressful. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> I mean, besides the stress, I mean, we're outside of you know between you two. Like, what were some of the hardest parts of kind of going through you know the show in general? I mean, I think for chefs, we're all about control. I mean, that's how you when you look at the kitchen. It's control chaos, right? I mean, it's, it's <laughs> every day, and you live on a deadline, and really, at least for me, like the way I can manage that is by controlling it. I mean, we live our lives in, when service starts, five to seven minute increments, um, and you're just like controlling all this chaos around you into this like beautiful orchestrated thing. Yeah, with tons of resources. You know, Absolutely, and then they take, <laughs> they take all that away from you. <laughs> and, so, and make you shop at Whole Foods and cook for Jacques Pepin. <laughs> Where if, if if Jacques Pepin came in either one of our restaurants, we would know weeks in advance. I know. And every little detail. We have specially orders, like not micro like, herbs. Okay, like, let's go. Let's go. Fresh from the farm. Let's go pick up some frozen fish and <laughs> run up. And bang something out in two hours. So they 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 take that from you, which is just I mean it's hor it's it's horrifying, you know and. But it's every day, and then the surprise of, I mean, really, like, the entire time we're sitting down, we're like, what's what's coming next? And every time the door opens, you're like, ah, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? For me, it was uh, just the feeling of being very naked. And, um, you know, as a chef, you think you have everything you need to get by and all the resources at your fingertips. And Naked? <laughs> Not physically. They edited that part out. <laughs> No, but it's like in the real world, we have so many resources. We have the internet, we have each other, we have people to help us. You know, there you're left alone and no notes, you know, no recipes, you know. You're just you in your head and you're spewing out two recipes a day, you know, like fighting for like the best dishes of your lives like twice a day. Um, and it's like at a certain point, you're like... I don't have an idea for this, you know, like I'm struggling to like to get, create something to and that's the hardest part to swallow because you want to believe that at a certain point in your career, like you can do anything and like they're left alone with all those circumstances thrown at you. You're like, I'm really having a hard time getting this out. <laughs> and you, know? you have, yeah. you have these incredible highs and lows yeah. on the show. I'll never forget. I mean, I won restaurant wars. Very next day, I'm on the bottom. <laughs> Very next day, I'm on the bottom with my chowder <laughs> for Jasper White. And the entire time, I knew I was going to New England, and I'm like, I revere Jasper White. I mean, he's like this old school guy. And I'm from the South, and I love the way he cooks. It's like out of poverty and out of these, like, you know, this beautiful, like, food out of tradition and families gathering. And I, he, like, I was most excited to cook for him. And here I am, I like, threw away the clams from my clam chowder. And it's like, <laughs> and I'm about to go home. And then literally like four hours before, I'm riding home in the van and I'm like, I just won Restaurant Wars. Holy crap. Yeah. Boom, I'm there. And Jasper White's like, this chowder is horrible. And he's like, and you, and you threw, So spicy. And you, and you threw away the clams. Chowder comes from, but I mean, I had these huge clams. They're like this big. And I had 30 minutes and I had no, I mean, I'm from the West Coast. Our clams are like tiny. And it took me so long to open them up. And like all this juice came out of it. And I sliced a little piece off. And I'm like, oh my God, it's rubber. Like it just opened up. I, I don't know what to do with this. And it was like clam chowder comes from poverty. You know, to, that's like frying chicken and throwing away the chicken and just eating the skin. Like the crispy shell. I'm like... Well, you know, I mean, Gregory was like, why did you make it so spicy for that guy? <laughs> I don't know. 
I'm freaking out. Well, speaking of those high-low moments, um, we were wondering if, I mean, if there were moments that you were just super proud of, maybe it was Restaurant Wars, maybe it was something else, moments that you're super proud of and things that, oh, you wish you could do again. I think for me, what signified, really encapsulated being on the show was uh, the Civil War that we had. Um, when we were on teams together, that was awesome. But for me, I was literally seasoning my dish like up until the last minute. You know, we were given about an hour to cook the night before. We were allowed to spend about, I think, a dollar or two dollars per portion. I think we we're given 200 bucks to serve 100 people, so it had to be cost effective. Um, we had an hour that day and like an hour I chose the next to do day. a tartare. Yeah, <laughs> good, good job. Um, but yeah, um, but they like I was praised for my seasoning on you know my curry, um, which is on the menu at the departure right now. Um, <laughs> but um, I was literally seasoning up until the last minute and um, just pulling every single resource. Um, just really using your palate, you know, as hard as possible, and just just fighting down to the last minute to just really focus on like nailing flavor, nailing execution, and just nailing challenge. And that was like one of the challenges I felt like I really, really did well. And um, that was like kind of where like my head to head with me like really <laughs> kind of started going. I tried that. It was one of the best things that I had oh. that I tried too. It was pretty incredible. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, Doug, what about you? What What are you kind of proudest of? Um, definitely restaurant wars yeah, for me. Yeah, was awesome. Uh, just because you know, I was a sous chef coming in the competition, and I saw these like executive chefs, and I wanted it. I wanted exec in that one, bad, you know. And it's it's a huge risk. And I knew, like you know, that morning I took it and was like, if you don't get it, you're going home. I mean, it's so when if you watch the show. There's only four people that could possibly go home for Restaurant Wars, and it's the exec in the front of the house on both teams. And, oh, really? <laughs> I, I haven't watched the show, really. Um, <laughs> except for that last season. There was, um, but the team, my team just came together, and we were really strong. And I fought Adam at the beginning. I mean, he's, we're such two strong personalities, and he's this kind of white tablecloth, old school New York City guy, and I come from Portland, and I'm like, we're doing family style, and he's like, absolutely not like no and I'm like yeah yeah it'll be good Just trust me because we'll control it right it was like this brief moment where I thought that I could control the situation and I just felt so good about it I was like we don't know any of these servers we'll just feed everybody the same thing you know it just made perfect sense and I had May and Melissa in the kitchen I was like dude we got this and me and Adam stayed up for all night mm -hmm. arguing and, and then we just had this beautiful moment of clarity and we looked at each other and we're like, they don't have a chance. Like we, we got this and we came in the kitchen and we just executed really, really well. And, uh, I'm super humble that I won, but I mean, it really was a toss up between me and him. Cause he, I mean, he just ran that. I would have never, ever volunteered to be the front of the house, like <laughs> in a million years, Yeah, I mean, but he just, I mean, we were so dialed in and it was just so fun. Like proving that I could do it, you know, on that scale, because sous chefs are, you know, we, we rarely get to do that, as we found out in the, the menu writing one with the radicchio. <laughs> I probably would have uh, cooked my foie differently, <laughs> and maybe let it rest a little longer, and, um, Not make but the, the, the radicchio salad <laughs> in the Italian challenge, I was, I was pretty scared. I mean, at one point, yeah, I forget, Kaliki was like, it was good, you made coleslaw. Like, Thanks, Tom. Was it good coleslaw? <laughs> he was like, yeah, it was good. I'm like, sweet. No, I mean, I think, like, Restaurant Wars is definitely, like, the hardest challenge. I do believe it's the hardest challenge on the show. And it's one of those situations where, you know, Top Chef tests so much of you as a chef and as a person. Um, but sometimes you're dealt a bad hand, you know, in terms of who is on your team. And sometimes you can run with he, it. He got that hand. <laughs> yeah. got that hand. And you take a back seat. <laughs> it was a, no, it was a smart move though. I was watching it and I was like, mm -hmm. taking it. <laughs> um, or you run with it, and you know, um, it's one of those things where you know that just is a testament to you as a manager. You know, to nail the restaurant worst. That's badass. Well, that's I had to win a couple because you took the entire first half of the season. I'm like, <laughs> Gregory. Can I just get one? <laughs> I got tired. <laughs> but you know, the, the funniest the funniest part when I when you watch it now is like 
right where he got tired, Thanksgiving, is really when I was like, okay, I'll, I'll take over from here. <laughs> <laughs> How is uh, kind of after the show, being on it, how's that affected you, both of you, in, in the restaurants? And um, It's pretty ridiculous. It's like actually insane. I think we both work in pretty busy downtown restaurants with lots of foot traffic access. So I think one part of it is, you know, we are extremely humbled and so happy that we were able to represent Portland so well. And, you know, all the gratitude and um, all the national attention, all the thanks has been extremely amazing. Um, I barely watch TV, so I can't believe how many people watch Top Chef. And just to be able to support Oregon um, is something I've loved to do for so long. As long as I've been here, I've always been promoting the amazing things that happen here. Um, So the aspect is amazing. But if one more person takes a picture of me from across the dining room, <laughs> I work in an I work in an open kitchen, I know. so I'm just like right. And you're there. like cuter than me, so I'm sure you get it more. <laughs> Thanks, Gregory. Fuzzy, fuzzy, right? Cute and fuzzy. Um, yeah. The opportunity. This is such a. It's such an amazing city, and. I love cooking here because the diners expect so much. I mean, really, I think that that's what makes it so great is that they expect so much and you really have to be competitive in the products that you use and the way you prepare them or you'll be obsolete very, very quickly. Um, And they'll let you know, (laughs) you know. But um, I just fell in love with Portland so quick. It's such a gorgeous city and the ingredients at our fingertips are just unreal. It really is. I I think, you know, there's been a lot of media surrounding Portland the past probably seven years and some of it's calm, some of it's gone and we've, we've been like a little love story for a little bit and then things quiet down and you know people say farm to table and then you know for us you know it's how we live you know we're surrounded by farms you know we get everything from farmers you know I know who makes my salt I know who makes my olive oil. It's a guy named um, Ben right? Yeah. yeah. No, like I, I, I think yeah. I heard him. So, you know, this is how we live. You know, it's not a fad. You know, like I live here. I cook a lot of food here. Um, this is how I cook. So for us to be able to solidify that on a national level is something I'm very grateful for. And if and it brings some tourism and brings some more money into the economy here and, you know, my friends can sell some hot sauce in different parts of the country, then I think everybody wins. And the love, like on a personal level. I mean, I, I woke up that Wednesday <clears throat> on the Julia Child Challenge. <laughs> like, I called Vito, my boss, and I'm like, I don't want to come in tonight. I, I don't want to, I don't want to be, I just want to crawl under a rock, you know? Like, I'm so, <clears throat> and I called my dad, and my dad was like, it's like a sports team, it's bigger than you, you know? Like, it's like a sports team that people get to root for. Like, that's such a selfish way to look at it. Go in, you know, like, man up, and, and Vito said the same thing, he's like, Get your ass down here <laughs> and watch it. And, you know, obviously in your head, it's like, God, oh, it's going to be so humiliating. And so many folks just came out and gave me so much love. And it was just like, you know, it was incredible because in your head, it's like, God, I'm going to look like an idiot. <laughs> and I, I did. But, <laughs> but you think that, like, all of a sudden, like, all these people are going to be, like, just, you know, over it. But the love was just, it, it was so, so good to feel because... I mean, it's like your middle school girlfriend breaking up with you I, on national honestly, TV. like, yeah. And you have to see, and it was traumatic, like, watching that. I watched it with Vito and all my cooks and stuff, and it, and it was awesome because they're like, oh, you know, give me love. But seeing my face, that episode, I was like, whoa, I look bad. I look, <laughs> I look stressed out. And all of a sudden, one of the hardest things for me was I just didn't, I, I didn't face that because... You know, I wanted to celebrate Restaurant Wars, and I want to celebrate, like, you didn't want to, like, watch it up to that point, like, out in the dining room, and it's like, oh, you killed Restaurant Wars. Like, yeah, but I go home in, like, three weeks, so, you know, you want to you wanna just celebrate it, but I never really faced it until I watched it again, and it was hard. I mean, I called him, and I was like, I can't do it, man. I can't do it, and then I called him after. He watches it before me. Um, so I would always like text him and be like, "How bad? How bad was it?" <laughs> and he would, and of course he's so sweet. He was like, "Yeah, you know, it, was, it, was, it wasn't too bad." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh God, it's bad. It's bad. It was bad." <laughs> <clears throat> but I mean, the the love that Portland is showing is it's really really yeah. incredible. And it's you know it's it's bigger. Being able to represent it was just such an honor. I mean, I mean it's such an amazing city of awesome people and artists and. All the new restaurants in the past, like two. I mean, it's just such an honor 
to go out there. It was an emotional there. ride, but I, for me, I made it pretty far, so I never had to be told to go home. For me, I made it pretty far. <laughs> I got th- one behind you. I know. I know, I know. But I'm saying, like, I didn't have to go home, so, like... <laughs> Um, Twice. So I didn't cry. I, nothing made me cry on the show. Oh. You didn't cry when I went home? No, I didn't cry. When you went home? Yeah. <laughs> I was sad. He told me that he cried. <laughs> A couple tears. I wasn't like... <laughs> A couple tears. Did you guys pour beer out for me? Of course. Did they show that? No. Did they? Yeah. No. Okay. It's a travesty. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I, I was moved to tears... Um, Probably after the finale when I got an email from um, a local editor just thanking me for what I've done. And, you know, I, I move pretty fast. And sometimes a lot of things are put in front of me and I just do them. Um, but, you know, to be able to slow down and to just feel the love of a whole city is like pretty, pretty, very, very amazing. So I was very I don't much believe moved. that you slow down. I was very much moved to tears when I got a certain <laughs> thank you letter. And it was because um, just just thanking me for being a part of everything and, and putting Portland on a level, which was pretty rad. So I was in I was in Imperial the night well, it was probably that happened more than once. I was sitting at the bar and this woman came running after you yelling your name across the dining room. And it was Dougie <laughs> She was a little bit more formal. She said Chef Adams. Oh that's good. So, I- I don't hear that often. <laughs> but is that like an abnormal thing or is that kind of, I mean, you said you're getting pictures across the dining room. Admit it, you guys have groupies now, don't you? <laughs> I, I've, I've never stopped <laughs> someone for their picture like, like that. I have no idea who they are. Um, I think, I mean, I think it's awesome, but I think it's, um, if someone's more engaged in maybe the story in um, maybe our restaurants even, um, I think that goes a lot further. If someone wants to make a true connection with us, I think that goes a lot further than someone just wanted to take a picture and run away. Um, oh. but Diva. Right? <laughs> um. I don't know. I mean, like, I, I'm a people person. Let's, you know, let's, let's hang out. Let's talk about it. I <laughs> think at the, at the bottom line, you know, if you come in a period, it's all about hospitality. And the way I always, like, the way, you know, I've always been trained is, like, treat everyone that comes into your restaurant like, like they saved all year for their anniversary. You know, that's what I tell my cooks. I'm like, don't screw up because you, this, it's probably not every day. You know, like I grew up that we didn't go out to eat and I'm, my parents did like once a year for their anniversary. I'm like, don't overcook it. You know, you never know. So it's all about hospitality. But I also work in an open kitchen, so it's a lot harder for me to say no. But the servers get yelled at a lot because like, can you have time to say hi to town? No! But it's hard because... I mean, we're Portland, like, neither one of us... I mean, there there's people that have been on the show, and I, like, follow them on Instagram and Facebook. I'm like, oh, sweet, where are you now? France, New York, you know, we've just been at work, you know? <laughs> yeah, people are I like, mean, what do you I, do after? I'm like, I'm going to work. Going to work <laughs> tomorrow. Busy. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I took over right after... I took over a Chef de Cuisine from Sous Chef right after I got back from the initial filming. Um, and... So, oh, come on, come on. <laughs> but, you know, I always, I, I do sometimes say no, and then I just feel, like, horrible about it. Because I'm like, I drove in from Beaverton, and, like, <laughs> like what, what an ass. Like, he doesn't have time to, like, stop by the table. So, and I do, I have said no, and then I just feel, like, completely horrible about it. They're like, you know, you never want to, co- it's like, oh, too busy. Like, what a jerk. He's right there. <laughs> you know, I saw him check his phone, like, five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so hard because there's an open kitchen, but we're just so busy. And I'm like, I also want to get your food out to you. <laughs> like, you know, and I want it to be like Delicious. up to the standard. <laughs> but my cooks just make fun of me. Not that's like the big joke. Like Gordon Ramsay, like, like, <laughs> like even when I left today, my cooks are like, oh, looking pretty, looking pretty. Where are you going, <laughs> chef? I'm like, Going to do an yeah. interview for yeah. the Oregonian. <laughs> like, oh, cool, we'll be here working. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> well, you know, that kind of leads me to something I was wondering about. You know, there's this whole celebrity chef thing right now. I mean, it's just, it's truly, you know, everywhere you look, celebrity chefs. How do you guys feel about that? Do you think that's a that's a good thing for the for cooking? Um, uh, is it I, a bad thing? I, is it I neutral? Think in, in our day and age, there are many different avenues you can take as a chef 
Um, some people want to work at one restaurant. Some people want to work at eight restaurants. And some people want to promote other things and get pushed in different directions. Um, you know, I love my restaurant and I love to cook and I love to be hands on. So that's the path that I want to take. Um, but I do have a lot of seats to fill. So if I can do something that helps promote my restaurant, I will. Um, but, you know, I am pretty grounded. Um, you know, and I, I know that I've gotten a lot through cooking, so that's what I want to focus on. But, you know, in this day and age, there's just so many different avenues you can take as a chef, um, and it doesn't necessarily involve cooking. Um, and it just depends on what you want to do. I think I'll kind of echo that. I think it's only, I mean, it's, it's, it's a slippery slope, I would say, and it's, it can be dangerous for certain personalities, in my opinion. Um, you have to stay grounded, and you have to, like, remember what you love. And and stay in it. Um, I can't imagine never being able to cook. I think that I would just kind of like lose myself because um, that keeps me grounded. You know, um, I just always my my father is this kind of Texas guy gives me a lot of great advice. But I I called him after the initial Julia Child episode when I finally got to use a phone, and I like held it together pretty good. I didn't cry or anything in my exit interview. It was a short exit interview. Because I was like, no, I'm not doing this. Where's Katsuji? <laughs> I need a beer. <clears throat> and so they like, you know, I go to like the elimination house and they're like, okay, here's a phone. And I called my mom. And as soon as I heard my mom's voice, I just like fell apart. And I was just so exhausted. You know, it wasn't even like, I even know why I was upset at that point. It was just like exhaustion and it's they really and my, my my dad like pulls a phone from my mom and he's like what are you crying about <laughs> and it's like it's it was like Doug when I was at your restaurant and the steak that I had and the food that you sent me that was real it's like this was a game you knew it was a game when you started it it's a great game I mean it's it got you it'll get you you know whatever but like it's TV you know like real is. Focus on. He's like my dad is someone. He's like you, you cry when someone in the family is sick. Like not, not when you lost a reality TV show. I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> Can I talk to mom again? <laughs> but he was like, come on. Like the the food that I ate that was real. People coming into your restaurant that's real. Like it was a game. You know, it was a it was a good game. But when you're there, everything fades away. I mean, it's such tunnel vision that you it's, if you're I mean, competitive and yeah. it was. So fun. To, to I mean, mean it was it was fun. It was definitely a, a full year. You know, the whole experience has almost been a year. But um, I know that we can look back and, you know, we're ready to focus on our careers and just be back in our kitchens. And we have a team of cooks behind us that really need us to be there. So I think those are the types of chefs that we are. Agreed. 